My presentation is divided into introduction, first, second, third poetic migration, and conclusion. To understand the nature of the influence of the political factor on the nature of the poetry of current Iraqi diaspora, we must first highlight the nature of the contemporary Iraqi poetic scene. For example, the poetic scene in 1947. Muhammad Mahdi Jawahiri struggled with administrative corruption through his bold poems and became known as the pioneer of modernization in the classic Arabic poem. On the other hand, Nazik al Malaika led the revolution of contemporary Arabic poetry against the traditional and the classical poem. Her free verse revolution was followed by such Iraqi pioneers as Bedr Shakir Sayyab, Abdul Rahab Bayati, and Buland al Haidari, whose work enlightened free verses from the first time in the history of Arab poetry. However, this poetic scene did not continue after the Ba'ath party took power in 1968, especially after the emergence of Saddam Hussein as a political decision-making figure in the 70s until he took power in 1979. Which led to the poetic migrations that were divided into three exodus periods. The first poetic migration includes two waves, pioneering poets, post-pioneering poets. Under the pioneering poets are the pillars of the Iraqi poetic scene and the pioneer of the Arab poetic modernity. This poetic migration reflects the features of the pioneers as they wrote their poems far from Iraq often describing intimate utopian memories of their homeland. The first poet to be considered is Muhammad Mehdi Jawahiri, a pioneer in the modernization of the classical metrical poem. He combined the Arabic poetic memory with the luxury of Al-Khalil Rhyme and current socio-political concerns. Al-Jawahiri passed it through his poetry a sense of alienation and revealed what clearly was happening on the ground of oppression. In his exile with his poem, Al-Jawahiri fought aggressively against the Iraqi dictatorial regime. He became the most famous poet in Arab countries and was invited by kings and presidents to recite his poetry. Nevertheless, their Iraqi citizenship was stripped from him and he lived exiled until his 1999 unceremonious burial in an unremarked grave in the Damascus Foreigners Cemetery. The second poet is Nazik al Malaike. Through her poem, Cholera, pioneered the Free Poetry Revolution in association with Sayyab and his poem, Was It Love? Al Malaika's book, Issues of Contemporary Poetry, is considered one of the pillars of this poetry revolution. However, her presence was diminished from the outset of the Saddam Hussein era, during which she completely stopped publishing or appearing in any media until her 2007 exile death in Cairo. The third poet is Abdul Wahab al Bayati, one of the most important pioneers of Iraqi and Arabic poetry. Lived as an expatriate in Arab and European countries, while exiled in Spain during the eighth year of the first Gulf War, he, he remained silent. He evoked Spain as well as the awareness and alienation of exile when he predicts his own death as a lonely stranger. Iraqi citizenship was revoked from him, and he died and was buried in Damascus Foreigner Cemetery in 1999. The fourth poet, Bolend al Haidari, was another pioneer of the revolutionary of free versus poetry. Even 
while living in exile for more than 30 years, he predicted in a sort of self-eulogy his own lonely death. He was buried alone while in Britain's exile. Post-pioneering poets of the first wave. This wave is characterized by the emergence of poetic voices that directly oppose the Iraqi dictatorial system or through different poetic techniques such as the poetic mask and the ambiguity which transmitted bold content that condemned what was happening on the Iraqi ground. This poetic migration wave reflected the bitterness of exile as they looked at the distance between them and their homeland Iraq. As examples, Mudaffar al-Nawab is the pioneer of dialect poetry in Iraq and Arab countries. His poetry reflects his exile and the ordeal of Iraqi people. The second poet is Ahmed Madar. He is a revolutionary Iraqi poet who has been living in exile for decades. Most recently in London, his poetry is very critical of the Arab rulers and the absence of freedom. The same thing may be said about the pioneer of prose poem, Fadl al-Azawi, who has been living in German exile since the 70s. Similarly, Saadi Yusuf and Sarkom Polos lived in exile and their poetry rejected the Iraqi dogmatic regime. The second poetic migration. This wave chronicled the political events that hit the Iraqi humanitarian scene in general and the poetic stage in particular as follows. Kuwait's 1990 invasion and occupation by Saddam's army placed Iraq under food and pharmaceutical sanctions. The Second Gulf War, so-called Operation Desert Shield and Operation Desert Storm, was led by the United Nations with 31 countries involving most of the Arab countries. The uprising of Shiite cities in the south and Kurdish towns in the north to topple Saddam's regime. Saddam's suppression of this uprising led to subsequent mass graves. Additionally, the impact of the economic embargo on Iraqi people lowered the middle class to a level below the poverty line. This diasporic wave included poets from the 1980s, most of whom were middle class and young when immigrating and lived closely to the missile fires of the first and second Gulf Wars and beyond these two bloody eras, followed by economic siege and mass starvation. These voices fled Iraq to exile, such as US, Canada, and other Arab and European countries. To name a few, Sinan Anton, Dunya Mikhail, Adnan al Saig, Abdul Razak al Rubai, Amal al Jaburi, Abdul Ilah al Saig, Basim Furat, Salah Hassan, Ali Jafar al Alaq, and others. As examples of this wave, the first poet is Adnan al Saig, who is recognized as the head of the modern literary movement in the Arab literary scene in general and the Iraqi scene in particular due to his techniques and writing style. Most of his poems are anti-war and dictatorial regime were written when Saddam was in power. His poems reflect the relationship between the dictator and his despotic censorship system. The second poet is Dunya Mikhail, who is a bold prose poet marked by a condemnation of war and mass death. Her poems 
paint exotic and surreal imagery. The third poet is Abd al-Razak al-Rubai, who is a poet and a playwright known for many poems which reach back to the Gilgamesh epic to condemn war, exile, and bloody alienation. His poem's techniques focus on a poetic mask, which are based on Gilgamesh's epic and the historical collective memory, such as al mutanabbi and so on, to reflect the self-eulogy and the lamentation of self-exclusion from Iraq. The third poetic migration. This poetic migration began with 2003 fall of Saddam regime in Baghdad and included the talented poets who were associated with the regime and formed the foundation of his continuation by glorifying his wars and declaring their absolute loyalty to the ruling authority. As an example, Abdel Razak Abdel Wahid. His poems eulogized Saddam's regime, lamented and intensified the ordeal in his exile. His poetry has been admired for its quality of poetic imagery and techniques and considered the eye of Arab poetry. All in all, the diaspora of the contemporary Iraqi poetry scene, whose geography has expanded, reflects the detail of the Iraqi humanitarian scene and its suffering. The mirrors of the Iraqi poetic migrations reflect the lamentation of the unarmed Iraqi people who faced the culture of mass death, which has lasted for more than 30 years and continues. The culture of hunger that placed the middle class into deprivation and poverty. The culture of oppression and terror that has overwhelmingly dominated the human scene.